What's up, y'all? I got a family to feed, so let's get into this tea. And we're about to get into Nelly and Ashanti. Uh, it is a TikTok at the end of this video. Y'all make sure y'all check it out. This woman uh, who was raised by her adoptive dad, um, he in love with her. Anyway, let's 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 get the normal stuff out the way. Ashanti and Nelly are married, been married. Hello. They've already been married, y'all. And everybody thought that they he just proposed to her recently and they did not get married. Baby, private life is a happy life and they did what it is that they needed to do um to not have everybody all up in their business. She finally pregnant, girl, they going on 45, 50. With, with babies and everything, it just gives everyone hope. You ain't got to be 21 to have a baby, nor do you have to be 31 or 41. You can be close to 51 and have a child, okay? Let's read some of the comments. Oh, my God. Private life, happy life. Love it. Keep people out your business. Now, where the people that was calling her baby mama? She a whole wife. Uh, I kept my marriage a secret for six months as well. It was so peaceful. I know that's right. Yes, she did exactly how I aimed to do it. Lived her best life, accomplished goals, and now she's settling down with a family, period. That's how you do it. Pop out, marry, no announcement. Hello. Not y'all in the comments mad they didn't share their personal business. If y'all don't go to hell. <laughs> They've been married and she's been pregnant. This how to stay happy. This how to stay happy and peaceful in 2024. Tell people things six months after the fact. Okay. You know, when you tell people stuff, they instantly start projecting their insecurities onto you. And it's like, uh, give me a second. I already got this. You mind your own business. You know what I'm saying? All the men who are fatherless and obsessed with podcasters bash and drag this woman for no good reason. Now she's happily married with a baby on the way, beautiful, talented, and has her family on God's time, period. She looks happy, no pun intended. Now all of y'all shut up. No, so miserable in the comments. They're not obligated to share their business. The world, I'm happy to the world. No, she said, oh, with the world. I'm happy for them. Oh, my heaven, God. All right. And the comments repeat like they like to do with me. Um, also, the ones that let everybody know was, of course, TMZ. For some reason, they be knowing everybody's business. Boy, everybody else know everybody else's business. All right. So TMZ is the one who let everybody know what was going on. And that's it. That's all we got for this story. I hope y'all enjoyed this. Please get into this TikTok story, child. It had me all in my feelings. I didn't really have a lot to say, but it's a good story. All right. I love y'all. See you later. What's up, y'all? Got a family to feed, so let's get into this tea. I told y'all we're going to slowly get into TikTok videos. So today is a good day because we got another um, TikTok video. This is a story time of my adoptive dad telling me he's in love with me. Let's get into it, y'all. I literally don't even know where to start, but I'm probably going to start with the most traumatic, which my adopted dad, like, that was the most traumatic. And l get this. Listen. Okay, so when he came over, he came over to my apartment to tell me that that day. He, like, rang me up and he called me and he was like, He's like, hey, can I like come over and talk to you? And I was like, okay, sure. Had a gut feeling. Think that I'm crazy? Swear to God. Had a gut feeling. Get off the phone with him. I'm anticipating his arrival. I'm like peeping through the blinds. I'm just, I have this gut feeling. I'm sick to my stomach. Then I hear, uh, like I go sit down, hear the car door slam. Go look out the window, see him walking up. I know what the fuck he's going to say. I know what he is going to say. And you're Brother. like, Oh, Laura, how'd you know what he was going to say? Because yeah. he did weird shit my entire life. And I guess I'm like, slipped myself into I'm like, how do you know? Why do we start like this? Everybody should tell a story like, um, who the F did I marry? This is too fast. Thinking that maybe it wasn't weird. Give us lube first. <laughs> because I didn't have a dad, so I didn't know what that relationship was really like. <clears throat> Okay, so I lived on the second story. He had to walk up two flights of stairs, knocked on my door. I'm sweating. Like, my anxiety, like, is so bad. I let him in. He sit, He sits down on one couch. Well, he's pacing a little bit, sits down on one couch. I'm sitting down on the other couch. And he's crying. And I, to think of, 
my adopted dad was born in the 60s. He was a country guy. He was like, you know how guys from the 60s are, how old dudes from the 60s are. So, like, I think I maybe saw him cry, like, once ever. So, I thought that he was having a mental breakdown, and he couldn't even speak. And I was like, say it. I was like, just say it. Say what you're going to say. Like, And oh. don't spray it. I was coursing it out of him because I was afraid that he wasn't going to say it. And I wanted to know what he was going to f say. I really should have recorded it, but. Do you think? <clears throat> so he says, he says, Laura, I'm in love with you. Look at me dead in the eyes with tears rolling down his fucking face. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. It's breakfast time for me. <clears throat> Listen, I was raised in a, what do you call it? A, a blended family, right? And that's like my, the mother that raised me. I call her mom, but y'all will have to know that she's my stepmom, but she's my mama. That's like her telling me she's in love with me. I'm disgusted. <laughs> Knowing me, literally, I'm going to have to show a picture of me whenever I was six years old, but I was like, he's known me since I was like as tall as my fucking me. He's like, Laura, I'm in love with you. And I was like, oh, I love you too. Oh, God. Uh, and he's like, no, I mean, I'm in love, in love with you. Like, I would love to marry you. <gasps> I'm telling you, I'm freaking the f out in here but it is also giving me clarification on everything that it ha has happened throughout my time knowing him since I was six years old um I blacked out after that I f blacked the f out I remember him asking me because I lived like five or six blocks away from my childhood home that I grew up in <clears throat> I remember him asking me to dinner because um, it was the weekend. They were a horrible family, but one thing that they oh. generally did was like Sunday dinners or whatever. Um, so I'm like, how was the upbringing? We got some diving to do. He asked me for to dinner, and I'm sure I said like, yeah, or something like that. And then he walked out of my house, and I locked every f lock on that door, and I went into my f bedroom, and I locked that door, and I hid under my blankets, and I f sobbed my eyes out i was like hyperventilating i was like freaking out i was in there for over an hour before i was able to like do anything else than that and i texted my sister at the time i was married to a man but anyway i okay. texted my ex-husband um and i was like you're not gonna believe this if you don't believe this i'm gonna leave you because this is up so I texted him everything, and before I gave him a chance to even read it or respond, I was like, no, fuck this, I need to talk to somebody. So I call him, and I tell him every single fucking detail. Mind you, my ex-husband was not a good man either. Um, that's another story. I of course she w is going to go down the line of not having good men, because clearly she just probably wasn't raised the best way. Or she just attract bad, terrible men. But I digress. Equally as traumatizing story. Um, oh my god! But anyway, he, I was. Why on the tell him then? Fun with him, and he was just like, he's like, Laura, you must be confused. Like, imagine a man sticking up for another up man. But mm. he's like, Laura, you have to be confused. There's got to be some, and he knows my history with these people and my adopted dad. Mm. But he's literally like, no, you're confused. There's no way. I hang up. I hang up on him. I call the most important person in my world, which is my little sister. Um, you should have called the first time. And I tell her, and she's freaking the fuck out too, because she has fucked up experiences. Oh man, now I gotta. Uh, part two. Okay, so where did I leave off? Okay, so I had told my little sister. Told your sister she got bad experiences. Um, we had a long conversation about what we should do because we assumed that if we told my adopted mom that she wouldn't believe us, 
we had told her about multiple incidences during our teenage years and childhood and she didn't really believe us one time she kind of did but then she sat us down in the kitchen with them and she's like this is what the girl said you did are you doing this he's saying no that we're mistaken that we're wrong that it wasn't intentional da 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 and that was like the end of it but the fact that she set us down in a room with him we were scared like it was hard for us to like muster up the courage to like talk. like who do you tell you know your ex-husband don't believe you or her husband at the time and then i guess his wife or I talk about <coughs> it with her let alone like in front of him you know so in the end we settled on telling her despite our reservations um we just didn't know how she was gonna handle it so I called her and I let her know that I wanted to come over and talk to her, but I asked her if she would come to the back porch and be quiet. Like, our back porch was off our kitchen. It was like an indoor back porch. It's where our laundry room was, but um, a lot of important conversations were had out there. But so we get there. She is already waiting for us and she's like, like What do you guys want to talk about? Um, and I just spill it. I'm like, This is what happened. He called me. I like I ran through everything that I literally just told you guys. And she acted shocked. She seemed shocked. And um, she was pretty upset by the information. Um, she said that well, she didn't act like she didn't believe me. Which is crazy because she didn't believe me for a second of my life. Generally, she wasn't a very nice or kind woman, so I was stunned that she did anyway. And she kept saying um, that she can't believe she didn't see the signs because she was a... I feel like she believed y'all then, but she couldn't leave. Something, something about it ain't right. A victim of child SA, she was. Which is also not my story to tell, but, um, and so she told us that she thought that we needed to leave, that she had to have a conversation with him, and they fought like crazy, like our whole childhood, and we just knew that it wasn't going to be good, so we excused ourselves, um, um, she said that, well, she didn't act like she didn't believe me, which is crazy because... She didn't believe me for a second of my life. Generally, she wasn't a very nice or kind woman. So okay, she already said that. I was stunned, crazy, like our whole childhood. And we just knew that it wasn't going to be good. So we excused ourselves. All right. Um, she ended up calling me the following day and saying that it's done. Like She kicked him out. Like, he's gone. And I'm like, where did he go? And she said... Like, I don't know, probably to Georgia, because that's where his family's from. He didn't actually have any family in the state that we lived in. All his brothers and sisters lived in uh, a really small town in Georgia. So that's where he went to. And I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked by her doing that. She never, like, she did not protect us from anything our entire lives no matter if we spoke up or not and she actually was just as much of an abuser as he was like the stories i have about her are just as crazy and just as wild <clears throat> honestly so she ain't no better i feel like i handled that whole situation really well but like a week after it i wasn't handling it very well um i was actually felt like i was like spiraling um and i was like full of anxiety and <clears throat> i just wasn't doing good so the phone calls that she was making to me i wasn't answering i wasn't answering the text messages and she thought that i was she kept saying are you like are you blaming me do you blame me do you blame me um and yeah i did like she lived with that man uh, I don't know, 20, 30 years. She knew how weird he was. She convinced him 
to shave our hair off my sophomore year, my little sister's senior year, to make us less attractive. What? Less attractive. That's, uh, ugh. that's terrible what some beautiful women go through. And it starts as beautiful little girls. <sighs> I hate that. I hate that. That's so terrible. Like, she wouldn't have been a person I wanted to tell either, but I get it. Like, two, two, two in the chat. It seems like that's all that she knows is these people. I mean, you know, if clearly her being adopted, her parents weren't there. This is. I don't like this. To a grown man. Okay, so. We could go bump for. <sighs> so back to what I was saying. I wasn't answering phone calls and texts. It's terrible. I think I went over there once and like the entire, I was there for a few hours and the entire time we were talking about that situation and I did, I just didn't want to talk about it. So I just really wasn't talking to her that much. Well, um. When everything kind of settled back down, I, I have no perception of time, but I want to say three, four weeks later, um, I was ready to talk. I was ready to have a full-blown conversation. So um, my sister and I called, and our childhood number, our phone number was disconnected. <laughs> the number that we use for like our kroger and like speedway pen it was oh, disconnected damn. and it hadn't been since the 90s so we were a little bit freaking out we didn't know what was going on so we got in the car we drove five blocks from where i lived and we saw a u-haul when we saw the u-haul we could only speculate what was going on honestly um i literally didn't know what was going on i thought oh maybe my adopted dad is coming back to get all of his things um, since he left in such a hurry. So that's what was going on in our head. Drove back home. We drive back like a week later. And the house was completely empty. No cars outside. Um, there was a pool barn in the backyard that was like packed to the brim of stuff. Of stuff. With stuff because they were practically hoarders. They literally never threw anything away. So it was stacked up to the ceiling. So the door was open, nothing inside. So we like park, we get out, we're looking through the windows. 444 in the chat. It's spotless. There's nothing in there. There's nothing in there at all. So after a little digging on my um, <clears throat> adopted um, dad's siblings Facebook, we found out that they packed up our entire childhood home took my little brother and my nieces and nephews who I helped raise and they dipped out of the state that we were living in and took off 15 hours away bought a <laughs> bought a campground <laughs> bought a compound and that's where they resided and that's where they continue to reside not my adopted mom because she passed away in July um this story is just so sad. But yeah, took my little brother that I also helped raise, and I haven't spoken to him again since I was 21. So back. Who is they? So if the, <clears throat> clearly, if the adoptive mom passed, um, then that would mean that the dad the adoptive dad has the brother. Oh, girl. Stabbed me when I was four. Raised me from age six and told me. Oh, so she got, oh, so she pointing them out. I actually triggered myself doing this trend. Wasn't expecting that. Stabbed me when I was four, 2010. Raised me from the age of six. Went to prison for it. Mm. Can I pause this? 
went to prison for it. And then took my little brother and moved 15 hours away on a compound. I haven't seen him since I was 21. Mm. That's his sorry ass. Ugh. God. So many things to say. Her and men probably going through it. Uh, Jesus Christ. I don't even know what to say. It's a lot of women that are beautiful in their own right. Um, and have the most messed up stories, bro. The most f***ed up stories you could think of. And just genuinely, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. I pray that she get through the trauma of all of this. Um, I know this ain't nothing that's going to disappear, uh, but God knows. I just pray that she got peace in her mind somehow. Okay. Um, y'all let me know. If y'all enjoy this, please send me more videos uh, and more stories. Um, and that's all I got. <laughs> I literally do not know what to say at all. Um, speechless. All right. Bye.